Hey, Steve. How's it going? Good, man. How you doing? Good, good. Lots of busy as That's usual. New. Lots of stuff yeah. going on. Yeah, indeed. So much. My wife says, do you have any work to do? I'm like, honey, there's always work to do. So, I mean, is there never, is there ever a time when there's not something to do? Well, there's always something to do. There used to be. There used to be those times. Uh, yeah, but we weren't days. making any money. <laughs> yeah, so. we weren't making any money. Exactly. <laughs> That's exactly it. Yeah. So, Steve, what's up with you this week? Um, I had an interesting last week. Uh, a, a few things happened. So, I, I was shocked to find that my music has been live on a uh, certain royalty-free music library since March of this year, and I had no idea whatsoever. Really? Uh, so it was a yeah, big shocker there. Um, I'll get into that in a little bit, and I'll tell you how that all came about. Uh, otherwise, just been working on um, finishing up the next course for the Production Music Academy. This uh, next course is going to be on corporate technology music, which I'm really excited about because it's a, it's a really interesting uh, genre mashup. Um, kind of taking a bit of inspiration from IDM and Glitch Hop and, uh, and ambient music and kind of throwing it all together. So I think that the members of the Academy are really going to enjoy that. And so yeah, the, lastly, I wanted to talk about this, uh, this personal feedback uh, stuff that I've been doing for the Academy, which has been really, really fun and, uh, and interesting, an interesting exercise for me um, to sort of uh, give people the constructive feedback that they need. So I wanted to chat a little bit about that. What's going on with you? Well, um, the last two days or three days have been spent trying to get this recent video that I just got done about taxi. And it by the time this airs, this video will have been out. It came out just a while ago. And uh, it's my big reveal if I'm doing taxi for another year. So uh, it was a lot of fun to do, but it also included a, an interview with a guy. And then I had a first part and I had a second part. And uh, my camera, I had this new kind of camera technology that I, I was using with my phone and it just crapped out at the last part. And so I had to refilm a bunch of stuff yesterday morning and I had to wait for the sun to come out so that the, the lighting would be the same in this room because I kind of reset up my room here. And so <clears throat> I've been working on that for a bit. Um, I also yesterday had my first meeting with something I call the Positive Spin Guild, which is kind of a group of composers and songwriters that... Uh, that I have artists as well people who are interested in learning about licensing and stuff and we've been doing this since last year about this time when I first started getting songs placed in music libraries and so we kind of get together every Monday just to talk licensing talk what's been happening kind of like what we're doing here on this uh, podcast but I, I've been having a lot of fun with it and I really kind of set down the rules for this year which we're, I'll talk about that in, in, in another segment here in just a minute, but I'm really kind of trying to change my focus in licensing just a hair. And there's gonna, that's going to come out why when you see the next videos on my channel about this artist I'm going to interview and stuff. But I just really think there's more than just placing stuff in exclusive sync libraries and placing stuff in stock libraries. And so uh, I really want to, I really want to, uh, to try to do some actual reach out and more, ex I'll explain it all here in just a minute, but it, there's a lot to it. And, and uh, I'll go through each point, but there's two ways to do sync licensing. One way is to put it into libraries. The other way is to actually go out and get cuts yourself. And so uh, that's kind of the difference in what I'm gonna be doing this year. Um, I've also started working on some classical piano pieces, um, kind of taking some MIDI that I find and, turning them into really pretty pieces that um, are not, I don't do anything to them except make them sound great through a great piano patch or something like that. And I've, I have a library who wants a bunch of that and they've just mm -hmm. decided, yeah, that's something that's missing in our catalog. And so they want me to do a whole new library or an album of classical piano stuff. So that's something that I've been working on lately. So that's been fun. That's awesome. So. Nice. So I know we have a poll that we want to talk about that we took, and I know you have some things to talk about, and so do I. So where do you want to start? Well, I want to start with this poll, actually, because uh, I have not seen or heard the results of this yet. I know that you've been uh, posting that poll in the Discord for some time. I'm really curious to know uh, what 
is, uh, yeah, what that's all about. So let's start there. So let's start right there. I'll make it a little bigger here. And here are the survey results. I ask a bunch of questions from uh, different people from different people on our Discord. And I just kept pushing and pushing. And every time we'd have new people that we welcomed, I would say, make sure you fill out the, the survey. And uh, the first question I asked was, do you do music work, licensing, composing, producing, performing, full-time or part-time? And so here is the way it's laying out. And as you can see, most people are part-time. That's about 64%. Um, and, and about half that amount are full-time. Uh, some other people 20, put twenty nine percent for full time. That's a that's a lot actually. Yeah, it is. It's uh nine. There were thirty one responses so far, and, and we'll keep getting more responses. But I kind of waited till we were over twenty five to just see how you know to get a, to talk about it because I didn't really want to share the responses until we had a, a a good kind of database of people poll count. But yeah. twenty it looks like uh, twenty. Around 22 of the 31 people said they're basically part-time, and only nine, uh, ten of them. So about a third are um, are full-time, which is impressive. Not, not bad. That's actually more than uh, you know. It's more than I thought. That's great. And then the second question was, how long have you been making music? And, and this is probably to be expected. Um, but yeah. you're, this is one of the one of the things that's going to show where most people who come to these things are. And it's gonna show less experience and less output. Um, as you can see, <laughs> there's only two of the 40 plus, and I'm one of those. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I don't know how many we count. And it, as you see, uh, there's more and more as it gets less, and under 10 years is the biggest at 41, almost 42%. Ah, uh, cool. And if you did you know, under 20 years, that's going to be like 65 or 64% or something like that. So I, I wonder if that, if that is any reflection on the fact that like discord itself is just kind of, you know, something that might be more appealing to, to a younger, younger crowd. It very well could be. My guess is the fact that, uh, I, I don't know that, you know, and, and maybe I should ask some of these same questions on my, uh, YouTube channel and see how the YouTube audience does as well as Facebook and just mm -hmm. see, you know, how it, how they, these same questions do on different, uh, on different platforms, but. Yeah, gotcha. All right, third question. How many songs do you have in your catalog? Recorded or not, be honest, not ideas or possible songs, full songs you can show someone. And to me, this is a really telling fact about where most of the people in our discord are and some of it does may have with to do with age but um mm -hmm. the the majority almost 50 percent says under 50 songs and i bet yeah. if i put 30 uh, a good number would be under 30. um i probably could have should have <laughs> taken it down a little bit more under 25 or something like that because <laughs> i can't tell you how many clients first come to me uh, and they say they're songwriters or composers. I say, how many songs do you have? And they're like, that's like 10, you know, or 20 or 30. And we hear all the time, well, I don't understand. I've got two songs in Audio Jungle. Nothing is sold yet, you know. And uh, it's just one of those things where you're going to have to have more than that. But when we look at these, if you add these up together, that's about the same as this uh, for anywhere from 50 to 250. Uh, you have another 45 percent so mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. and interesting then you have two people are up here and i'm one of those as well so um right just asking where do you fall in this um it's somewhere between 50 and 100 okay and do yeah. you a, a total catalog yeah well the licensing music yeah okay. yeah it's probably no, no, i mean about, about, i meant total did i say oh in terms of like uh in terms of no, my like never uh, mind this was this was for I guess this was for licensing, but I kind of met in general even songs yeah, if, that you have out and about. It, yeah, if you if you include my like my band stuff in there as well, it would probably it would still probably be less than a hundred to be honest. It'd probably be getting close to a hundred though. Okay, all right. Uh, how often do you write songs? Every dang day was sixteen percent. At least something per week was sixty one point three percent. Uh, so that was the biggest one here. Not not as often as I would like was 19%. And 
and rarely uh, was only 3%. So most people are are trying to write something per week, it looks like. 60%, over 60% of people are writing something each week. Um, I probably should have changed this, how often are you writing on songs? Because we're all writing, I mean, it's not like you write a new song every day, but a lot of times you're working on a song every day. Yeah, even, that's the distinction. adding to it. So maybe I should have changed that. There's all sorts of questions you can ask. What is your ultimate goal with music? This is no surprise. Uh, 83.3% said, I want to write full time uh, and make and live off music income only, which is probably a dumb question because I, I, I don't know what other answer I expected people to really uh, put on this. But yeah, only that's... four said, write part time and work my full time job. And mm. Although I know a lot of people, including doctors and lawyers and people that I know, that could never quit their full-time job to do music um, mm -hmm. unless they just busted it. That being said, I know a, a CPA who was making six figures who quit that to do music and now makes six figures doing music because she busted it. And so um, that's cool. Watch my channel for that because that interview is going to blow people out yeah. of the water. And so this was kind of interesting. What kind of music do you prefer to write? Um, pick all that apply. So this was not a one choice only. This was, you know, you could have any choice. And so uh, pop rock obviously was the first one and the biggest one with 61% of the people write really? pop at least sometimes. Now that doesn't mean that's all they write. That just means that's one of the things they write. So Interesting. all of these are kind of showing you how many of the people who took this poll, 31 people, out of 31 of them, 19 write pop music or rock music. So I kind of put pop rock together. And then the next biggest category is 51% with trailer and cinematic, which mm -hmm. probably tracks for for this kind of thing. Um, the next one actually is electronic dance with 38%, uh, or almost 39%. The next one under that would be rap and hip hop um, is 35%. Uh, percent of people and classical which surprised me after that um, with 35 I don't know why this chart doesn't like put it in order going down it doesn't do it down here either <laughs> I, it'd be nice to be able to you know sort uh, sort it but uh, and then yeah. after that you've got other things jazz as usual is right around where classical is um, you're going to see mm -hmm. that in almost any poll of any music in any kind of survey um, and then after that the next biggest one is kind of a split between Latin and country folk bluegrass Latin world mm -hmm. music and country folk bluegrass and then we've got blues following that R&B and new age following that and gospel with only six percent which again is pretty close um, so yeah that's that's how the people who are in our discord are writing so I thought that was pretty interesting very cool. Who's writing those gospel tracks? I want to hear those. No, I would be one of those as well. Okay, um, <laughs> so I'm one of the two. How many songs do you have in music services or catalogs now? This is stock, sync, Spotify. This is the question that we were talking about earlier. How many do you, this is not only your sync catalog, but you're on music services, all that kind of stuff. And so... Again, under 50 is very large, 61%. Um, and then it, the next highest actually is 100 to 250, and then 50 to 100. Mm -hmm. And then there's a few with, well, there's me. Uh, so again, um, I think that's me. I, I, this probably is. Well, there's a Eero in the in the Discord. He's got like a he's got a big catalog. Maybe too, it's like him. I, I don't yeah. know if I would have done this because in sync. You, I mean, in stock, I have like a thousand over a bunch of libraries, but there, a lot of them are all the same song or cut downs of different songs. So mm -hmm. I don't, that's not really, I don't know if I counted that way or if I counted this way. Um, I'm probably more this way if uh, the one, 100 to 250, uh, if, if we're talking um, stuff that's not copies of songs. But anyway, okay. that's what happened on that one. Um, how old are you? Thought you'd enjoy this one. Uh, under 20, I mean, sorry, over 20. So between 20 and 30 is 32.26%. The next biggest one is over 40. And then the next biggest one after that is over 30 with 22%. Over 50 with four with 12% uh, 
or 13%, and then only one person under 20. Hmm. Wow. Yeah. Only one person, eh? Mm -hmm. Crazy. And then where do you live? This also kind of surprised me, but it d probably doesn't surprise you, but um, Europe is th the biggest uh, with 45% uh, uh, of the people, North America with 42% basically of the people. And then it's not so it's not surprising seeing that knowing th that like I've had these discussions with with people in the discord like where they're from and stuff like I know there's a lot of Europeans in there and obviously there's a lot of Americans but it it does surprise me that there's not more people doing this in South America and, and in Asia it, that's it, that's what surprises me and I wonder why that is or like, Asia I wonder especially what, but yeah. again it, maybe it's a discord thing Maybe it Discord is not be. a thing in South America or Asia, certainly Africa, Australia. I'm surprised there's not more Australia people. That's true, too. Yeah, well, it must be a YouTube thing, too. I mean, it may be the way that the algorithms are working for those countries for YouTube because that's where people are discovering the, the Discord yeah. channels through Could YouTube. Be. So who knows? Could be. But yeah, I thought that was really interesting. And I've also done one for your um, Production Music Academy. But it only yeah. has right now about 14 responses. So I'm going to wait till there's, again, uh, 25 to 30 responses or more. I mean, if you like the Discord channel, I don't know if the people who are listening to this podcast are uh, on our Discord channel. If you're watching this on YouTube, you definitely need to be in Discord. But if you think the Discord is cool, uh, the music, the Production Music Academy is going to be next level i mean some of the stuff you have in there i do have a question about the production music academy real quick if i could ask it and that sure. is do you plan or do you now are you doing any challenges yet for writing certain kinds of songs it's funny that you asked that because i was just trying to think of of a challenge to get to kind of ramp up the engagement in the in the academy i've been spending so much time uh just kind of getting things together tying up the loose ends um, and creating the content that, you know, I've, I, that I promised, of course, yeah. but, um, yeah, it's great that you mentioned that because I do want to, uh, yeah, I do want to get some challenges going on. Any suggestions there? I guess it's too late for Christmas at this point. Do you think? <laughs> well, no, not really. No, that's I mean, a good if you, idea. Though. If you ran one from now till like mid December and, yeah. uh, you know, and, and you want people to try to write fast. I mean, you don't yes. want to give them two months to do a challenge. You want to give them a, a week to do a challenge. And yeah. I think you've got a week until we get into the, 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 the really depths of December. And so especially now, if you maybe announced it tomorrow before the, well, at least in the States, the Thanksgiving holiday. But um, that's a, a, probably a very, do you guys have any kind of Thanksgiving in, in, in do you have a holiday? It happens. Yeah, it, it happens earlier, though. It happens okay. in, in October up here in Canada. Well, at least for your uh, uh, American mates, uh, you know. Yeah. It, but still, it doesn't matter because I plan on using this holiday weekend for a lot of writing. That's what I do on awesome. holidays. You know, I, I use that because I'm not – that's not a time I have to really work for clients because we're all off work, supposedly. So I can really have more time to compose. So if you did that yep. and said, hey, uh, we're, we want to see what you've got, and I – I'm telling you, I've written, like I, was, I said when we talked last, I, I, I've written for a lot of taxi briefs lately, and I write those in a day. But not, maybe not everybody is as fast as that. But you want to encourage them to be as fast as that because if they are going to want to start to write for briefs, they're going to need to be fast. Yeah, well, you know, it's yeah. speaking of taxi, actually, one of the reviews that's coming up for, and I'm going to talk about a little bit more about these reviews that I'm doing Um uh, for the academy is uh someone sent me one of their taxi briefs and it was a it was a dark uh minor version of silent night and it was really really interesting so yeah speaking of christmas music i now i did one called ghostly silent night was that mine that was the piano one no it was uh it was uh from one of the members his name uh was it was ken he sent oh. me a track for review so cool i want to hear, hear that because i did one as well and i i put it it's all in all the i did it for stock and um it, i i'm also getting ready to, to send it to a taxi thing so it must oh, be cool. for the same taxi it's same brief doing, same brief probably, probably. Yeah. yeah 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 so i'm going to do a review of that uh in yeah it's going to be out uh, either tomorrow or or thursday um but yeah, the reviews have been really fun. And I was, was going to talk about that just a little bit because yeah, um, go ahead. The, I think it's the, you know, 
I, it's, I guess it's like the polite Canadian in me, but like, I always feel like a little tentative about giving like really, you know, in what, in my mind, I think could be potentially like offensively, like, you know, honest feedback. I'm always a little bit worried about, you know, oh, I hope I don't like hurt anybody's feelings here. But, um, and sometimes I put those videos out and I, and I kind of cringe a little bit and I'm thinking like, I hope they don't mind that I, you know, that I'm, I'm being kind of in my mind, scathingly honest sometimes, but I think, you know, I'm always reminded that people are really, um, surprisingly really, really appreciative of that, of this, of this feedback. And I think it really, really helps the, the members. And, and so just to give you a, a quick rundown of how this works, like if w the people that are submitting their tracks for review can opt in to have a public video review so that all the other members can see this review, um, and cool. the other members are watching these videos, yeah. you know, and, and sometimes the, it, it, the people don't want their, their, their music reviewed publicly, which I completely understand, of course. Um, but it's, it's nice to be able to share these reviews with the community. And I think people are getting a lot of value from it. And um, this is something that we spoke about last time a little. I think it's, it's hard to find really honest, constructive feedback on your work because you, you don't tend to get these types of... Um, this, you don't tend to get that kind of feedback from friends and fans. It's hard sometimes because people, you know, want to be encouraging and, and nice. And of course, like, you know, I'm encouraging too. Um, but I have to be, uh, I have to be honest, you know, about, in these things. Otherwise, I'm, I'm not, I'm doing, uh, you know, these members a disservice. So um, I try to be as objective and, and, and constructive uh, as possible. And uh, But, you know, it's it's fun. And it's a, it's a good exercise for me, you know, because I, I'm just... It's sometimes it's a little bit tough to, to be honest, but like I re, I'm thinking back to when I started doing this work, I was working for this um, this this one gentleman who was uh, who was starting a library. This was years and years ago, but man, he and he was a friend. He's a, still a friend of mine to the, to this day. But he would give me the most like brutal feedback. You know, he wouldn't be afraid to tell me if it he just thought it sucked. And it's it's hard when you work on something, you know, and you put your yeah. I've I've been doing critiques for about 20 years now for a lot of my clients, mostly for songwriters and sometimes artists because that's who yeah, I've been you're, working you're with. You're probably mainly. good at this because you've been producing clients for such a long time. I don't do a lot of that work. Well, but, it's uh, it's been one of my little services. It's like a three-song critique. Mm -hmm. And I, I used to do them for um, the Gospel Music Association here in the States uh, for a long time. And what made it easier for me is to stick to the technical things. In other words, mm -hmm. as long as you stick to the technical you're not insulting anyone. In other words, you're saying technically your lyric is doing this. It's yeah. it's not using strong words. It's your melody is doing this. It's not doing this. And your uh, the 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 two sections, your A section and your B section sound exactly alike and I can't tell the difference to where the B section comes in. And so mm -hmm. I have a sheet and I I think we've talked about this before and I just need to send it to you, but it's a sheet that I stole that I was given by this uh, place that had me do reviews for them. And basically it just, you give a grade on each part of the thing that they're doing. And mm -hmm. if you do it that way from a technical point, you're not really hurting their feelings. You're giving them technical feedback on specific technical things. You're not just saying, I don't like it because it's bad. And yeah. uh, you know, guys like you're talking about that gave you a, a kind of a mean uh, critique. And I've had those people too that have said, devastating things to me like you know you're really a waste of talent because you're not applying yourself in music now the guy happened to be right who said that because at the time I wasn't I was working a corporate job I was not doing music full-time and I wasn't on my way to doing music full-time but he could have said it in a different way you know that was was a little nicer or or stuck to the the more truth which is unless you leave the corporate job behind at some point and start doing and really just bite off living off your music, which is what it takes. I mean, at some mm -hmm. point you decide I'm going to give up that job and I'm going to just work hard on this stuff. And then that makes you work harder. But all that to say, there's technical ways to explain where someone's going wrong. And, and, and yeah, and that's what I try to keep. Yeah, water. exactly. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I totally hear you, and, and like, and, and I try to keep it to the techn technicalities and remove my uh, my opinions about certain things that aren't really really helpful because you know I might not like the sound of a certain instrument, but is that really helping? 
you know, uh, yeah. in terms of the like the objective uh, value of the track. No, maybe not. So, um, but yeah, that's a, that's a great point, man. Yeah, yeah, that's and a great way uh, to... like for instance, a, a guy was showing me. Uh, he's trying to get into stock music, and he was showing me his his song, and he was using. Um, easy keys. Are you familiar with easy yep. keys? By uh, mm -hmm. same people do easy drummer and easy stuff. drummer. Yeah. yeah. But the part just sounded so robotic, and I said, "This is not your fault. You didn't do anything wrong. It's this part mm -hmm. that's not working. It might be time to take your your loops and things that you're you're getting up to the next level and explore some other places like Slice or or arcade or something like that and find some better loops to, to build off of that sound a little bit more current and don't sound, yeah. this sounds like, you know, uh, this particular, and it's not his fault that the playing doesn't sound good because he didn't play it. So I'm not oh, really man. digging on him. I'm digging on the loop itself, you know, the yeah, technical yeah. thing. So. Yeah, man, that's that, and that that is such a uh, that's a topic that I'm always revisiting, especially. And I know I understand the, the the issue because it's like I'm not a pianist, right? So it's it's always a struggle to make uh, a piano part sound realistic or, or human when you're not uh, versed on that instrument itself, right? So, um, and the same thing goes with string programming. If you're if you're yeah, not a string yeah, player oh, yeah. and you or, and or you you're not a long time orchestrator who knows what cellos can do and what what the role of the viola is and what the you know how orchestral percussion works and brass works and what what a flute can play and when you're not going to really hear it which is in its low register and all that kind of stuff you don't really you don't really know that when you're just starting out and you don't know orchestration you just play the sound on the keyboard wherever you want to play it and it can sound really fake so that's just technical exactly. stuff though it's just and that's just information that you can share with people so that's great. exactly man yeah totally Okay, what's your um, what's your next topic, or are you done with that uh, thing? Yeah, well, it's <clears throat> yeah. I'll, I'll, let me chat about <laughs> this. Is something that happened this? Uh, oh yeah, I want to hear uh, about this. The other day. So this is so this is so fascinating, and I, I'm still going down this weird rabbit hole trying to figure everything out here. But um, so let me give you a quick recap here. What happened back in earlier this year is I applied to Artlist and Audio at the same time. For those of you who don't haven't heard of audio um it's a royalty free library it's spelled um a u d i i o so audio with two eyes and um they're kind of in the same vein as artlist in the sense that they have a very artist forward brand uh and you you know uh, as a contributor you upload an album of work with like uh album artwork and stuff like that so same kind of format as artlist same idea um so i mentioned this uh this this what happened with with them in an earlier uh, YouTube video that I did last week, and uh, basically, like I said, I applied to Artlist and them at the same time, but I came to a bit of an impasse with uh, the audio team over content ID issues. That's right. And that. um, in short, Artlist informed me when I was accepted by them that they register their tracks with uh, their own content ID service. So I said, okay, no problem. Um, I had to get back to the audio guys and tell them about this because part of their stipulation for uploading music to, to their platform is that your tracks are not registered with the content ID service. So I said, okay, we have a bit of a conflict here. Um, I hope you guys don't mind. I can send you some new music. Uh, I'd still like to work with you. Yada, yada, yada. So wait, were and, you trying to get the same songs into art list that you were audio? Yes, and and this was and this is a classic mistake. This is a kind of a rookie mistake that you know you shouldn't send out the same music to a bunch of different libraries at the same time. Now these are both non-exclusive libraries, so I so in my mind I figured what's yeah, what's the harm? Why not? But um, I came uh, upon this sort of this this conflict because, like I said, Artlist is registering their tracks with their, their own content ID service uh, apparently. So I went back to the audio team and I told them. Um, Hey, like we have this, I have this issue. Can I send you some different music? Um, cause my tracks were accepted to art list and, uh, you know, content ID issue, blah, blah, blah. I never heard back from them. Um, you know, and, and so I assumed that I'd sort of like burned that bridge right. in a sense. Um, so <laughs> fast forward to now, uh, I, I, and I always, I was just kind of curious, like the other week, I was just like, I wonder whatever happened there, you know, like, mm -hmm. and then I went on their, I went on their website and I searched my name just out of curiosity, 
because I was like, I wonder if, you know, if it actually did like get uploaded and it had, I mean, it kind of blew me away. Wow. Um, I was totally, totally surprised to, to find my music had been there. That's was crazy. There. And so I, I, I emailed them right away and I said, Hey, like what's going on here? Like, you know, I thought we'd come to like a, an impasse here and like, and I'm totally shocked to find my music on the library. And like, I was like, how long has it been there? Um, so, uh, we had a bit of a back and forth, um, right before the weekend. And they said, they said that the, in short, that the tracks had been there since March. Um, and that the, they had a change of, uh, leadership. Cool. So there was clearly like a, like some sort of shift internally. And uh, and I was like, okay, like, um, so I had to write them back with like a huge list of questions. Cause I'm, you know, I'm, I'm curious. I was like, Hey, you know, I'm, I'm stoked to be working with you guys. Like, you know, I got no problem with my music on your website. Um, but, uh, I was told initially that you guys do quarterly payouts. So like what's going on there? Um, because I haven't received any, any kind of, uh, information about that. Um, and my, my music has been on the site for quite some time now. And also it leads to a lot of questions about the content ID thing. Yeah, in the I was going to ask that. So, I don't know what's going on there. Like, uh, to be honest with you, I'm totally confused. Um, I haven't heard back from them yet because I sent them an email right before the weekend and they're probably, um, you know, they'll get back to me this week sometime. But uh, yeah, apparently, I mean, there was never any content ID uh, conflict to have to worry about in the first place because the music has been there, assuming it's being downloaded too. But so isn't, man, who knows what's going on? Isn't it also on Artlist and aren't they also controlling the content ID? apparently that's what's that's what's confusing to me it's it has been on art list for you know the better part of this year yeah um and they've they've never gotten back to me and said hey like you know we we have an issue here like uh, or anything like that there's been no there's been no issues so i i wonder what the nature of their content id system is uh or whether they're really um you know they whether they are registering it with their, with some sort of system who knows, man? It's kind of a mystery. That whole content, you know, I've done all that I want to do on Content ID right now. I mean, I, yeah. I've done a video on it. I've researched it. I have I've thought about doing it. You know, I still look at Motion Array. And the two reasons why I don't get into it is because I don't want to be filtered out of sales, especially at motor, Motion Array. And the second reason is that I just, I don't want to have songs stuck in an ad rev or an identifier or one of those systems for years, or a year or three years, and not be able to pull them out and pitch them exclusively. This year is all about everything being non-exclusive. I need everything to be fluid. I need to be able to make deals with songs and not have anything stuck anywhere in anything. And if you go with, with ad rev, you're stuck for a year. And if, you're, if you go with identify, it's a three year term that they have your songs and content ID. And if yeah. I get it signed to an exclusive library, they definitely want to have the uh, content ID rights. So, um, yeah, it's mess. It's messy, man. And like, I feel the same way about it. I'm not, I'm just not messing around with it when it yeah. comes to uh, my licensing music. It just seems like a, a like a, a lot of hoops, a lot of, a lot of pain. We, so we've heard stories in our discord of somebody making $30 per quarter or $10 per quarter or something like that. And, you know, it's one of those things that I'm like, well, you know what? I'll just give that up for now, that $10, because if I get it signed to an exclusive library, we're talking about possible $1,000 deals or $2,000 deals. or Exactly, uh, man. And, and, and Motion Array, which pays me well each month and is a nice income stream. I don't want to mess with that. And uh, so th those are bigger than $10 a month or $30 a month that I might get from. And, and you really have to have a lot of streams or a lot of plays on a YouTube video to start getting uh, any kind of stuff. And you have to know that your stuff is actually getting out there on YouTube videos and getting lots of uh, hits and, 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 and plays. So I just don't know. I'm just staying yeah, out 50, of it for now. 50 bucks a quarter is definitely not uh, worth messing around with whatever's working on motion array. I mean, like, yeah, motion array. I don't want to mess with, right. with them at That's all. A monthly. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Big shout out to motion array. They, they've been awesome. By the way, thank you for the, uh, um, uh, for the, 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 the shout out on, on the newsletter motion array. That's very nice of you. If that was very listening. cool. <laughs> yeah. I saw the other day, I have a number three and you have a number one in one of the categories right now or something. Somebody said, I thought, 
Uh, I've had a couple of number ones that were like there for a week or two, and they usually kind of like, you know, they float up, up and down in, in the algorithm. But uh, I don't know what's going on this last month, man, because uh, it's been the most epic uh, haul of all of That's all awesome. time. Yeah, record setting um, uh, numbers this month, and I didn't even upload anything. Yeah, it's, so. it's hard to tell. Sometimes, yeah. Who knows what's going on? I don't know if anybody really knows how that library works. I mean, with Audio Jungle or Pond Five, you know how many sales you have, and you know what you got from each sale. But that's a all yeah. a sharing system with through the subscription deal, and so who knows? Yeah. But yeah. Uh, well, um, I did want to talk about one other thing here. I want to talk about the kind of vision I have this year that's changing from what I had last year for sync licensing and. And um, if people are interested in sync licensing, there's generally some different camps that people talk about in sync licensing. And the first camp is someone like Jesse at Sync My Music, who is totally focused 100% on you supplying albums to music libraries and getting stuff in music libraries where it can be found. It's a set it and forget it thing. Hey, I love it. I'm down with it. I really, I really agree with that methodology and I'm doing it on several libraries. But I think there's also the camp of people that say, why in the world would you give up all of your publishing and give up half of your, uh, your upfronts when you can keep all of that, get the deal yourself, and uh, basically you know, just make all that money yourself? And it's kind of the same deal with like taxi. Why would you go through taxi and spend all that money to get a relationship that you could go out and get yourself um, just by going out and doing some research for libraries and stuff. And the answer always is, how much do you want to work? You know, the person who doesn't want to work and do a lot of research and go try to make all those relationships and stuff is going to want to pay somebody like Taxi, and it's going to be worth it for them to pay Taxi because that way they can just work on the briefs. And as I say in my new video, hey, you can work on the briefs, and if you don't get in the brief, you don't get forward it on hey it's just another song for the catalog all good you know it's it's almost like a a, a uh, i call it a catalyst for new material in your catalog and if it does mm -hmm. get forwarded on uh as you'll see in my video the odds that someone's gonna get back to you are very low but if it does hit somebody and they get back to you that's a relationship that could become one of those relationships you would have gotten had you gone out and looked for libraries and looked for catalogs yourself it's right. the same thing with being your own kind of person uh, versus putting in the libraries versus going out and actually talking to music supervisors, actually talking to sync agents, actually looking for opportunities for the songs. And so I think this year uh, I've been motivated. It's not often, Steve, that I meet someone who works harder than I do, or at least as hard. You're, you're, you're a person who I think does <laughs> come close to that for sure but i i met someone who blows me out of the water as far as what i'm doing and cool. uh i did an interview with uh this lady uh last week and it's going to be coming out here in the next week or two on my channel as i start to move into the artist type stuff and she has lit a fire that i i need to to really work more as my own sync agency and and hold on to all of the exclusivity rather than giving it away and I'll still do the, it's kind of like being on Artlist. You, you, you give those songs to Artlist, well, they're not exclusive. It's a better example would be, what's the non, Epidemic Sound. Let's say you wanted to pitch to Epidemic Sound. Well, if you pitch to Epidemic Sound, number one, those songs can't be in a PRO, and you can't be in a PRO. I don't know if mm -hmm. you can't or just the songs can't. From what I understand, you can't, but I could be wrong about that. That doesn't make any sense. But I know, it's strange. Um, but also, you know, you can't have content ID. It's a totally type of exclusive deal. Only they have these yes. songs, all that kind of stuff. And that's not any different than my deal with Sony BMG, basically, uh, on the albums that I have there. They're, they're pretty exclusive. Um, mm -hmm. But I get the writer side, and I'm already in my PRO and all that kind of stuff. But in this kind of deal, you're trying to keep a lot of non-exclusive catalog. And I have people telling me, why are you giving that up? So I'm going to try to keep that about keep all that and i'm going to look for more non-exclusive deals through taxi and through song trader and through all sorts of stuff but i think there's a side of the industry that 
loves the exclusive side. There's people who love going to libraries and finding exclusive songs that are there and always saying, hey, this is a great place for me to go find music and I know nobody else is going to have it. And so I'll, yes. just, I'll just have that music. But then there's yeah. the music rep says, I don't care who, how many other people are using this song. I need it for next Thursday's episode of CSI Vegas. You know, yes. I don't care. All I need is the song. I'm not looking for anything exclusive. I just need to use that song because that's the one I want. And in that case, I get the entire upfront. I don't have to split it with anyone unless I have a, like a co-writer or a, uh, a partner in the song. Same with the back end. I get the writer side and the publisher side. So I make double the money uh, of those placements. And from what I understand, the upfronts are the real money. I mean, the back end is nice, but it sometimes takes a long time for that to become a consistent income because it takes nine months from the airing if that. So I'm going to be trying to do a little bit more of that this year uh, along with the catalogs. I think I'm going to, I'm going to play both of them. And then, and then, of course, with stock as well. And stock's a, but stock's a different thing. Stock's more... It's a different you know, thing. Yeah. I'm, I'm looking forward to that interview. And it's, you know, it's, it's always great to, to surround yourself or like to have these conversations with people who are like just real hustlers, you know? Like, because it, it, like you said, it lights a fire under your butt. And, and, and it just like makes it, it's just super motivating to Man, be around that kind of energy. It's going to change the way all my artists think it's going to change the way you think you're going to need to buy her $10 book and read it. And like I did in a night and go, cool. wow, I need to be doing this. And, uh, it, it just lights a fire under you. Um, so cool. yeah, I, and, and it starts to make you think, Hey, you know what I, I've, cause Steve, I know the quality of, of compositions you have and, um, not that there's anything wrong with Motion Array or Art List or any of that stuff. Obviously, it's all making money for you this year. But it's not. It's only making you a portion of what you would make in exclu more um, uh, bigger uses in, in Dude, licensing. I know it. I know it. It's so it and it's so, it's such a it's such a like a never ending battle to sort of divide the time between like the actual writing process and yeah. and the pitching process because both of them are full time jobs and of course. you know as as you know. It's difficult to make the time, um, but but man, yeah, like I hear you, I hear you. I, I'm looking, you know, I'm thinking bigger picture too. And uh, as much as I love Artlist and Motion Array, and I'm incredibly grateful for for them uh, this last year, especially. Um, well, man, I I, I, think, I want to I want bigger placements. I think you just sure. have to look at those as other non exclusive libraries. Motion Array, I look at as a non exclusive library. Um, all of them, <clears throat> on five, all of them. And uh, Crucial Music is another one that I've got something signed to uh, that right. was one of the ones that I, I got rejected by Taxi. It was written for a brief, but then I got it into Motion Array. I got it into all these things. I had it in a, and, and it was, and then I got it signed with a non-exclusive library called Crucial. Well, that means I didn't have to take it down from Motion Array and from all the other places. It can stay in all mm -hmm. these places. But they're a company who gets very big licenses sometimes. Um, mm -hmm. They got a, a, a license for a, a great big movie called um, uh, for Ed Hartman. And uh, it was the football movie. I can never remember the name of the, the, the movie. It was the True Life football movie. But, you know, it, he got that through Crucial Music, which was a non-exclusive library. And so, cool. again... A non-exclusive. You're not now. You might split the upfront with them, um, and you might even split the back end with them. But it's something you can continue to pitch to other people in other places. And so I think non-exclusive is is a way to go. But I think Motion Array, Art List, all of those are important pieces to the pie. And I'm not going to do stop doing stock music just because I can get a, a placement on a movie or in an ad or something because. Yeah. Those are once in a month thing or a couple of months a thing or whatever, and they take time to get the money from versus stock music, which we get paid every month. And so I'm never going to say, no, I don't want that. And I think of stock music as a B or C library to put stuff in sometimes that doesn't get into those larger libraries. So I think yeah, you have yeah, to look at yeah. it that way. Yeah, cool. Well, I'm telling you, I, I'm, I'm pretty – well, maybe I'll wait – to you put out your your tax reveal video <laughs> it's out i'm kidding oh, it's already out let's go look at it okay okay I'll, I'll watch it as soon as this but as, as we're done here but yeah. my feeling is that like i think that would be a good place for me to start 
um, at least in terms of, you know, having the, the right kind of motivation to, to write for briefs, like, and, you know, have this, this, uh, you know, as a starting point, it sounds like a good place. Listen, I made this um, point in the video. You can go to Taxi. Anybody can go to Taxi.com, go to Submit Music, and see the right. briefs. And right, you right. might but even. But if I'm paying go, the membership fee, if I'm paying that membership fee, then it's the you know, it's like it's like buying a gym pass, right? Yeah, but you know, that's not like, that's not the point. That's not what's going to make you submit it. What's going to make you finish the track and submit it is because it's due by tomorrow. Gotcha. Yeah. <laughs> and otherwise, <laughs> if you're not a member and you know you can't submit anyway, you might just start on it and get halfway through and going, eh, I'm not so sure about this. And I don't. I, what's I've got what's the timeline for the average brief? Like, what what are they? What's the turnaround time? At least a couple of weeks. Sometimes. Oh, okay. uh, almost a month. Sometimes. So, oh wow. Uh, okay. Yeah. You, you've got time. A lot of a lot of times, they have a separate service called Dispatch that is for people who are looking for stuff tomorrow, all the mm. time. But it's another 149 bucks a year or something like that, oh, wow. and you still got to pay the five dollars. So, I, huh. I, I don't uh, I don't like that as much because um, I'd rather have a little bit of time and, and adjust it into my schedule for writing these things. But mm -hmm. uh, yeah, uh, it's it's I think having those briefs is something. And again, my goal last year was to write five of those a month, and I only ended up writing about 20 for the year. So that wasn't close. So, uh, and, and again, the, the actual ones I wrote for, uh, which I talk about in the video, you know, it, it made the difference on my decision to stay with taxi or not. So cool. Cool, man. So to learn if I did or didn't, you need to watch that, but you also need I to watch will. it for the interview <laughs> I did with this guy who has had a, ha, has had a lot of forwards. He's had like 200 forwards to companies. And then the number of companies that have gotten back to him will shock you. But then the number of placements he's gotten from those things will also shock you. So it's it's pretty good numbers. I, I really dived down into what I wanted to know that no one was talking about with Taxi. And cool. I think uh, there's stuff in this video that no one has ever talked about with Taxi before. So I think it's good. Can't wait. Can't wait to see it. Um, I, I just put a video, a video out too. But it was... Uh, <clears throat> something I really didn't have a lot of time to work on. Oh, no, on. I want to see that like, too. I saw I, that. Yeah. I just, yeah, put on my Black Friday uh, video. Um, and... Uh, it was funny because last time we were we were talking, we were we were we were chatting about that Native Instruments uh, guitar um, VST, the plucked nylon. Yeah. I was like, man, I I gotta get it. Did you get it? <laughs> it's, yeah, man, I got it. It was only sixty four dollars Canadian, which yeah. is pretty pretty reasonable. It's like forty nine um, US, and it's it's uh it is sounds it good. It sounds really nice. It it just feels weird buying like a like a classical <laughs> well, for you especially this guy because I play because I, I have a beautiful classical guitar yeah. <laughs> sitting right next to me right here, um, but it, it it is man it sounds nice. I'm definitely gonna use it. Um, yeah, amongst a few other things, I'm pretty stoked about this year. Yeah, I'm looking too for much some money. strings, and I might do a, a guitar, uh, at least one guitar, and then maybe some nice. If if some, Spitfire like, was some having a big strings? sale, I might do some. I really prefer to get like uh, solo strings because I find myself writing more for solo strings. I find that pad strings and things like that, I can fake probably pretty good with what I have. But solo things like solo cello, solo violin, uh, those are the things that I don't have really good samples well, take for. Well, take a look at this. I mean, in my opinion, the Spitfire solo strings library is probably one of the most detailed and, and beautiful uh, libraries for solo solo performances uh, i just picked up uh audio imperia's nucleus as well and they have a lot of really nice solo patches in there in fact i got it because they have really nice solo patches um also pretty affordable too it's okay. like 2.99 american yeah. right now so I'll look at that cool yeah man well man it's been nice chatting i think we've probably talked enough i think we covered it for this uh, episode um yeah. yeah everybody just subscribe to this podcast we're going to be talking like this every week about the things that we are personally doing. I think the best experience that you can get is from other people's real experience. We're not like talking off the top of our head on what we think somebody does. We're talking from experience from what Steve and I are really having happen to us as we experience all these libraries and all these services and all these sales and all that kind of stuff. So you're going to continue to learn real uh real ways to make music income and, and make music in general uh, and, and experiences from our experience, I think. Absolutely. And uh, if you guys have a minute, check out uh, Eric's YouTube channel. It's called Make Music Income. 
And uh, my own is called Stevie B Production Music Academy. Yeah, check out the Production Music Academy. A lot of cool stuff getting ready to happen there. We're going to have some fun in there. So excited. Totally. So please check out uh, all the links in the show notes below. And we hope to be talking to you guys soon. Thanks so much for listening. And happy Thanksgiving to uh, my American friends. Happy holidays (laughs) to everybody. And we'll be talking to you soon. See you guys.